So racket yep. number one, mm-hmm. U-Haul Growth Index. Texas is the number one growth state of 2021. All right, so Texas edged Florida for the largest net gain of one-way U-Haul trucks in 2021. California, California and mm-hmm. Illinois saw the greatest net losses. So this is not true migration. I just want to be clear on that. Just U-Haul. This is one-way U-Haul trucks. So it's it's also very specific to they're just taking a one-way trip. They're leaving the U-Haul in that new state. It's very interesting though, because I think we did a, a, I feel like we were in the old office. So it had to have been maybe last year. I swear, didn't we do- We did United re- Van Lines. Well, no, 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 no. But we did a real word on how it was impossible for, for you to rent cars. So people were renting U-Hauls for like vacations too. So it's interesting to see, it would be interesting to see how many- of those skews. Well, so, Remember that? We did that whole art we did that whole yeah. article on that. Yeah. And and some of the northeast states and some of those numbers have changed a little bit. Some but some of the northeast states literally didn't have they had a, a shortage of U-Hauls because people were taking these one-way trips right. out of the northeast states yep. and just leaving them in, you know, the sunbelt states. So, uh Lone Star State er- earned the bragging rates for 2021 narrowly besting Florida for top honors, according Mm -hmm. to transactional data compiled for the annual U-Haul growth index. So Tennessee was third, South Carolina was fourth, and Arizona was fifth. And we did did mention that California, Illinois were the last two. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and Alabama round out the bottom five. New York was 45th. There was some improvement, though, for some of these Northeast states. Select Northeast markets showed year-over-year migration recoveries as Maine rose 21 spots, Vermont 14 spots, and Connecticut, Nicole, was up 25 spots I love it. in the U-Haul growth index. Uh, but yet, like we mentioned, New York, Mass, and Pennsylvania – we're still down in that bottom six. So Connecticut moved up 25 spots all the way to number 18. Feels good. That means we're above the above the middle. We're like the top top 50%. 43 to, to 18. That was one of the, if not the biggest mover on the entire list. Like Rhode Island, neighboring state to Connecticut was relatively flat, was 35 last year, well, went up three Oregon, spots to 32. Oregon beat us a little. They were at 45 and went up to 14. Ooh, there you go. So yeah. So people going in to Oregon, mm-hmm. interesting. Alaska thirty fourth up to sixteen. People saying, you know what? I just want to be in Out? the middle of nowhere, nowhere <laughs> on the other side of Canada. I want you it know? to be sunny all day long, yeah. <laughs> or dark all day long. I don't know what is it right now. Do I you think know? it's. I you're asking the wrong person. I just know that it's light a lot, and then I guess dark. I guess I don't know. So the the top three states have been flip-flopping over the last three years, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee. Makes a lot of sense. All three states have no state income tax. Texas and Florida are relatively warm. Tennessee doesn't – Tennessee's got odd weather, uh, but obviously it's got booming areas like Nashville and and, and it's got the no state income tax. So uh, any surprises here besides – Connecticut jump in twenty five spots. Uh, I actually, I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised that um, Massachusetts kind of stayed flat, but I thought for sure maybe that would have moved up a little bit. But well, we saw like because we, you know, we did over five hundred transactions in Connecticut yep. as, as a team, and we saw a bunch of buyers coming in from Mass, where it's like, hey, I got to get to Mass, but not really all that much. I can actually get a lower cost of living in Connecticut, which seemed, which is mind-boggling. But when you compare it to Mass, it's true. Mm-hmm. And so we saw some U-Hauls come in from Mass down to Connecticut. Yeah, I guess I'm just. I guess I'm a little surprised. And then New Hampshire, certainly I'm New, New Hampshire. York to Connecticut. Oh, one, oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I guess I, I didn't feel like I saw many Mass. I feel like though, like historically, we've seen a lot of people buying in Mass instead of Connecticut, especially if they're retired because they don't get, they're not getting taxed on that. Um, so I'm a little, I am a little surprised that that didn't move up a little bit. And then New Hampshire too. New Hampshire moved down in the rankings. I feel like I heard a lot of people moving up to New Hampshire. My father has a house in New Hampshire that he sold like within days to. Um, so I mean, the market's certainly hot up there. So I'm surprised that that didn't that didn't that moved down instead of up. But no, I mean, Matt, I, I love hearing Connecticut coming through. It's good. 
Matt Merrill, U-Haul era district vice president of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and West Texas said, we see a lot of growth coming from the East and West Coast. A lot of people moving here from California and New York. We also see a lot of people coming in from the Chicago markets. I think it's a lot due to the job growth, a lot of opportunity here. The cost of living is much lower than those areas. Texas is open for business. When you look at Texas, Florida, Mm -hmm. Tennessee, I still believe we're in the early innings of this massive migration into those states because if you can work remotely, you avoid paying state income tax. If your job is relocating, they're likely relocating to one of those states, if they're coming out of the Northeast or California, Mm -hmm. they're likely going to Texas. They're likely going to South Florida. So if it's a nine inning baseball game, I think we're in like the second or third inning of this Mm -hmm. migration. And we're going to see another 10, 15, maybe even 20 years of this type of migration down to those states, as long as they keep these policies that are working for them intact. Like no no state income taxes. Yeah. Well, I think where they have the benefit too is is development. They have so much land still left to develop. I mean, I told you like if what I think it was almost 2 years ago we were, I was down in College Station for St. Jude and I mean, they were building 500 home communities with like new schools. I mean, that's they're, they're building neighbor they're still building neighborhoods and they and they're they're certainly not slowing down. No. And companies believe in the, in these areas. You look at what uh Facebook or Meta just did this week. They just bought up the rest of the available office space in this in this high rise in Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. They already have office space in Texas. They're already telling people like in California you can work from home forever. And they just went out and just scooped up a whole bunch more of office space in Austin, Texas. Seems like an interesting move for a company that that is pro work from home, but they clearly believe in uh getting talent from from Texas. So interesting. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this short clip from The Real Word, click here for another one. Or if you like the full episode, click here.